this is part four and it's the last part of the cellular structure lectures. There's only a few slides left. Oh, okay. Um, we know that animal cells do not have cell walls, but bacterial cells, um, prokaryotic cells do have cell walls and fun fungal cells have cell walls. A group of organisms called protista have cell walls. These include algae. Um, so prokaryotic cells have cell walls, which will be our bacteria and our archaea that we've talked about. Um, and plant cells have cell walls. So the material that makes up the cell wall in a prokaryotic cell is called peptidoglycan. And I'll say that one more time peptidoglycan. That is the material in bacterial cells or prokaryotic cells that is used when we stain the cells so we can see them under the microscope. The peptidoglycan layer absorbs stain so that we can see bacteria under the microscope. But what we're looking at below is a cellulose cell wall or the chemical structure for a cellulose cell wall and those are found in plants. Plants have cell walls composed of cellulose. This table is a comparison of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Remember, if they're prokaryotic, they lack a nucleus and they lack membrane-bound organelles. So instead of going through the entire thing for you, you can do that on your own. I just want to um, circle all of the structures that are found in both. Both prokaryotes and eukaryotes have cytoplasm, both have ribosomes, both, there's none, there's none, none of the other structures that they both have. So eukaryotic cells have cytoplasm and ribosomes as well as all the rest, the nucleus, the nucleolus, mitochondria, peroxisomes, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi, vesicles and vacuoles, but the centrosome, of course, is only found in animal cells. Lysosomes are only found in animal cells. And then what you don't see on here is the chloroplast and the cell wall and the large central vacuole that's found in plant cells. Oh, <laughs> here's more. <laughs> okay, so the chloroplast is found in plant cells. Um, the prokaryotes, as well as eukaryotes, have a cytoskeleton composed of protein fibers. Um, flagella are just, it's just going to be some for all the different types of cells, um, except plant cells are not going to have flagella except for some plant sperm cells. Any plants that live in the water, close to the water, and they have to be fertilized by the sperm swimming to the egg rather than pollen, their sperm is going to have flagella. Um, plant cells never have cilia. All cells have a plasma membrane. And then cell wall is found in prokaryotes and plant cells, but it is not found in animal cells. All right, so we've just got a few slides left and there are questions. In this unit, we considered the different cell components of cells and focused on the differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells and the differences between plant and animal cells, which are eukaryotic. Which of the cell components listed on the last two slides are found in fungi and protist? Well, it's important to know that fungi and protist are eukaryotic. So it's going to be eukaryotic cells. And if we go back to the table, um, I'll just check off each one that's, that's found in um, fungi and protist. So they're both going to have cytoplasm. They both have a nucleus, nucleolus, ribosomes, mitochondria, peroxisomes, ER, Golgi, vesicles and vacuoles, um, centrosome, no in the prokaryote, so we can't check that one. Um, and Wait, no, we're not even looking at prokaryotes. I'm so sorry. Centrosome, yes, we can check that because that's found in fungi and protist. 
Lysosomes are found in fungi and protists. And chloroplasts are not, but the cytoskeleton is, flagella is, cilia can be, plasma membrane, and cell wall. So pretty much everything. Um, why and how are light microscopes and electron microscopes used in biology? We use light microscopes to see larger cells and larger cell parts. We use electron microscopes to see detail inside of the cells. We use them electron microscopes to see viruses and to see um, bacterial cells in detail because all we can really see is their overall shape under the light microscope. So basically, electron microscopes magnify to a much greater extent. All right, what is the structure and function of membrane-bound organelles found in eukaryotic cells? I'm not going back through all of that, but just remember, all of the organelles that we learned are membrane-bound organelles except for ribosomes. Um, and in animal cells, the centrioles are not bound by a membrane. But everything else, um, just a very quick short list, the nucleus, the nucleolus, the Golgi complex, the endoplasmic reticulum, the mitochondria, the lysosome, the chloroplast, all of those are membrane-bound organelles. Um, the components of the cytoskeleton, remember there are three fibers. Starting from smallest, we have microfilaments. And those, remember, they formed kind of a border up close to the plasma membrane. Um, we have intermediate filaments which gives shape to the cell. And then we have microtubules, which can be found in cilia and flagella. And they can also um, facilitate movement inside the cell. In cell surface specializations, um, we talked about microvilli being um, folding of the plasma membrane, which increases surface area. Um, And that's really basically all that we talked about with cell surface specializations. And we did talk about the extracellular um, fluid and extracellular chemicals and that kind of thing. But really, mostly we just talked about microvilli. So that's it for...